welcome to my new video series known as biotechnics explained in less than five minutes where i explain biological concepts in less than five minutes or so so if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe and hit that subscribe button so today's topic is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay or elisa so this assay is a colorimetric test that uses antibodies and color development reaction to identify as certain substances like antigens or it could be also used for detection of antibodies. Now ELISA gives a qualitative and quantitative information about the presence of an antigen or an antibody. ELISA is widely used as diagnostic test for many viral diseases including HIV, AIDS. Now in ELISA the reactions are set up in a 96 well plate and that is read in a colorimetric machines so where which is a colorimetric detector basically which measures the absorbance at specific wavelength and the result is displayed in a computer screen and the result is basically absorbance versus concentration from that we understand how much we get the quantitative and qualitative in, in, uh, information about how much quantity of substance is present now there are three variants of ELISA we would discuss one by one by one so the first variant is indirect ELISA which is used to detect an antibody against a known antigen so when we know an antigen we want to understand whether there is a known and uh, what, what antibody binds to it we would do a indirect ELISA in this situation wells of the microtiter plate are coated with known antigen here the antigens are marked in yellow then the antibody to be tested is added into the wells hopefully the, if the antibody is specific against that antigen it would bind to that antigen now our enzyme link secondary antibody is given and while substrate is provided the enzyme would give rise to product and that results in color development so if the color is developed that is an indirect proof that the sample that we provided has that specific antibody against the antigen which is coating the surface of this 96 well plate. So that is how we understand whether an antibody is present in a particular biological sample. Example, a patient's blood or a patient's serum etc. So this kind of technique is used to detect HIV. So let's say this human is infected by a HIV virus and had, has AIDS, so it's a HIV positive human being. So as for, di for diagnostic test, his blood is collected and centrifuge to form the serum. So from the, from the serum fraction, we could get the antibodies generated against the HIV virus proteins or HIV viral antigens. So we know if HIV virus affect that person, and that person is HIV positive, so the antibodies would be produced in his body. If we can detect those antibodies, then we would have an idea that whether the person is infected or not. So definitely, in order to understand that, we would do an indirect ELISA. So we would see if the antigen is present. That means the person is HIV positive. If the antigen, if the antibody is absent, the present is HIV negative. Now in a lab, what would happen is they would give the patient serum, serum into the well so which is previously coated by antigens present on the viral surface so if the serum contains the antibody against the viral antigen then it would definitely bind in the uh, antigens coated on the surface of the well and thereby when we put the secondary antibody enzyme linked it would develop a color reaction upon giving a substrate but on the other hand side, if the patient serum doesn't have that antibody produced, doesn't have the antibody produced, should, that should be produced in a viral response, then there would be no color reactions because the secondary antibodies doesn't bind to a primary antibody and unable to give a color reaction. So that would be HIV negative. There are other variants known as sandwich ELISA, which is used to detect antigen of interest. For example, we wanted to detect an antigen, whether an antigen is present in a, 
patient's blood sample or not. So what we can do, we know that antigen binds to its specific monoclonal antibody. So we can coat the well of the microtiter plate with monoclonal antibody. After that, we can give the patient serum or patient blood or anything like bodily fluid like that. And then we can give another monoclonal antibody coupled with enzyme. And then we put the substrate. Now if the second, if the monoclonal antibody coupled with enzyme is binding to that particular antigen, then it, a color would develop. That would tell indeed that antigen is present in the patient sample or patient's blood. So that is how we understand whether our antigen is present in the sample or not whether indirect ELISA tells us about whether an antibody is present or not. Now once we know antigen is present, another question is that how to detect how much antigen is present. And competitive ELISA give us an understanding about that. So in con con competitive ELISA, you know, you, you, are, you are asking a question that how much antibody is produced in a patient sample. Or so definitely how much antigen is produced in a patient sample. So what you would do, you would previously incubate some antibodies which you know it is produced against these yellow antigens. And then what you would do, would coat a surface of the well with these yellow antigens. Now if the antigens are present in ample, then all the antibodies we provide against it would bind. And there would be very less amount of free antibodies available to bind to this antigen coated surface. So once we give it, so what would happen is most of the antibody would be in a floating condition because it cannot bind to the uh, antibody co anti antigen coat of the wells. So ultimately a faint color would be developed. So there are two possibilities. One is there is a dark color reaction happening that means there is very I mean if, if the dark color is developing the antigen concentration is very low because as the antigen is low when we incubate with antibody few antibodies bind to the antigen but most of the antibodies are now free which can in turn bind, bind to the antigens coated onto the surface of the well and when we provide a secondary antibody it can give rise to a color reaction but if there is too much of antigen present, then once we provide our antibody against that antigen, almost all the antibodies are occupying the antigen. And now when we provide the whole solution into the ELISA well, it, there is no more free antibody which can bind to the surface coated antigens. That's why once we provide the secondary antibody, a very faint color or no color is uh, developed. So that is how we understand that how much antigen is present. So if it's more antigen, then a, so if, if a lot of antigen is present, then a very faint color would be developed in a competitive ELISA. But if there is very less amount of antigen, then the dark color would be developing in the uh, competitive ELISA. So that is all about ELISA. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.